Another edition of Chris Black's NJPW Report. I'm your host, the natural Chris Black of the Saturday Night Slamcasters podcast, independent professional wrestler, and everybody's favorite narcissist. On today's show, I'm going to go over everything that went down on night three of the World Tag League Tournament, which took place on November 19th, 2020. As always, we have our undercard opening match. It is another tag match. We have Honma and Kojima tagging up once again against Suji and Yuji Nagata. Just like last time, the veterans start the match out. We have Honma and Nagata. We get some more old school strong style. Suji gets tagged in and calls out Kojima. Hmm, interesting. At first, he takes the dominant lead. Surprised. However, Kojima does cut off Suji, who takes a little bit of heat but he still tries to fight back. He is not a dead fish. He tags in Nagata. We get some more old school strong style. Kojima gets in and hits some more of those machine gun chops. Suji and Nagata double team and do double submissions. Kojima and Suji are left in the ring. Suji works hard to put him away, but gets hit with the lariat for the pin in 10 minutes, 16 seconds. Another good undercard match, just like yesterday's. This time they swapped Suji for Kid, but a good match overall by all guys involved. Now let's get to some tournament action. First match we have The Empire, Jeff Cobb, and The Great Okan taking on Chase Owens and Bad Luck Fale. It's Bullet Club versus The Empire. Bullet Club's gonna take an L, more than likely. Bullet Club jumps money outside before the bell rings, and the beatdown takes a while before getting back into the ring. Bad Luck Fale and Great Okan start off. Uh, we get some more of them bitch ass chops by great Okan. But Bad Luck Folly breaks down Okan, takes him down, and tags out. We get both fresh men in as the Empire stays on top, fighting off both members of the Bullet Club. They isolate Chase, and after a tour of the islands, that's it. That's all she wrote. Match over, 6 minutes and 47 seconds. This is another dominant win for the Empire. I will say that Jeff Cobb and the great Okan, they work pretty well together, but I don't really like Okan's style. It's a bit exaggerated, but not in a good way. Next match we have the tag team of Hanare and Tanahashi taking on Finjuice. It's a good face versus face match, so you know we're going to get a good competitive athletic match between these two teams. Tanahashi and Hanare flex, Finjuice <laughs> follows up with some flexing of their own. Finjuice actually takes an aggressive approach, utilizing some quick tags and cutting the ring in half, which is a very good tactic of tag teams. You always want to split the ring in half, keep your opponents on your side of the ring. Hanari gets away and tags Tanahashi, who comes out hot. Juice is able to stop his momentum, sets up a heart attack, but Finley gets tripped by Hanari, and Hanari is now in the ring, and he gets to get some time to shine. He misses a blind tag to Juice, and gets hit for the heart attack for a two count. Juice gets in the ring, nose look like it's busted, hits a left hand of God, and then they knock him out with a doomsday device for the pin in 11 minutes, 18 seconds. Nice match between these two face teams. I love the spirit of competition in New Japan, and it was a very good competitive match with no bullshit and a nice finish. Good job, guys. Next match, we have the Gorillas of Destiny taking on Yujiro, Takahashi, and Evil. So we're getting another Bullet Club versus Bullet Club match. Jado wants everyone to do a two sweet. So all six members throw up the two sweet, give it to them. But then Togo, Evil, and Yujiro try to kick the other three. The Gorillas of Destiny catch the foot. However, Togo does nail Jado. Yujiro is the first to get some act right by the Gorillas of Destiny. Evil gets the tag and goes on the attack outside with Yujiro loosening up some turnbuckle padding. In the ring, they send Tamatanga into the exposed turnbuckle and now they take control, but not for long. The match starts to break down. We get some shenanigans. We get a magic killer to Evil, who's not the legal man. But in the end, Tangaloa puts the cross face on Yujiro, who taps out in 8 minutes 36 seconds. Do you expect anything less from you, Jero? Fucking jobber. Anyway, is this common with Bullet Club, or is there a rift? Now, I understand I've only been really playing close attention to New Japan for probably the last 
18 or so months. So I don't know if this is just common for the Bullet Club to be kind of using underhanded tactics against each other, where there's cheating on both sides. But Guerrilla with Destiny is just more successful at it. I don't know. Why don't you leave some thoughts in the comment section if you're an avid watcher of New Japan. And let me know if this is just normal behavior for Bullet Club. In the next match, you have Yoshihashi and Goto taking on Toru Yano and Tomohiro Ishii. This is another faction battle. We got Chaos versus Chaos. You know, I know there's a lot of people who criticize Yoshihashi, but his performance at the G1 really changed my opinion of him. Yano and Goto start the match. We get some turnbuckle shenanigans. All four men get in the ring, and Yoshi taking the exposed buckle all in the first five minutes. Ishii and Yoshi trade hands in the ring, Yoshi is just not backing down. Goto and Yano mix it up before Ishii gets tagged in. Now here's some hard hitting New Japan action. Yoshi gets back in and starts to work on Ishii. He starts giving up some hard chops and kicks. Both teams attempt to finish off their opponents. I thought several times this match was over. We get a lot of close falls in this match. But in the end, all it took was a vertical drop brain buster by Ishii to Yoshi to end the match in 15 minutes, 8 seconds. This match was a good mix of styles. There was action from start to finish. Both teams stood a fair chance of winning. Outside the Yano shenanigans, it was a pretty straightforward match. In the main event, we have the team of Sanada and Shingo Tagaki taking on the Dangerous Techers. You know, the pairing of the Dangerous Techers has really grown on me. I like how they work together as a lethal combination. They jump Sonata and Shingo before the bell, Suzuki Goon style, but they quickly recover and put the Techers on the defense. The match spills to the outside where the Techers regain control using heel tactics, aka cheating. They keep control of the match isolating Sonata until he's able to get to Shingo for the tag, who comes out and fires up on both Zack Sabre Jr. and Tai Chi. Zack attacks Shingo's arm in order to disable the pumping bomber, smart move. Sonata and Zack rekindle their old rivalry and put in some good mat work. If you remember correctly, Sonata and Zack Sabre Jr. had a match at Wrestle Kingdom for the uh, Rev Pro title. I thought Sonata was going to take it from him, but he did not. He fell short. Anyway, back to the match. We get double submissions put on the Techers. Who's able to reverse it into submissions of their own? But Sonata and Tagaki escapes. All four men try to take each other out, but in the end, all of them are laid out in the ring. Shingo and Tai Chi tease each other's finishers. As we hit the 20 minute mark, Shingo picks up Tai Chi and delivers a last of the dragons for the win in 20 minutes 36 seconds. I actually enjoyed this match more than I expected. The dangerous techers make a very good team and complement each other's styles. Unfortunately, they did not get the victory today. So I'm going to go over some points thus far. We have the Empire, Finn Juice, Grills of Destiny, Evil and Takahashi, Yoshi and Yano, Sonata, Tagaki, and the Dangerous Techers all tied at four points. We have the team of Goto and Yoshihashi at two points, Bad Luck Fale and Owens and Tanahashi and Hanari stuck at zero. And that's going to do it for today, folks. If you are enjoying my reviews of New Japan Pro Wrestling, be sure to do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, so you're alerted whenever new episodes are posted. I'm going to be covering every single night of both tournaments, so again, you don't want to miss any of that. And as always, you can follow me on social media. Links are in the description that will take you to my Facebook page, Instagram, as well as my Twitter. And while you're at it, show the Saturday Night Slamcaster some love. Links are in the description that will take you to our podcasting host page, Buzzsprout, as well as our Saturday Night Slamcasters YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and our Facebook group. Again, I'm really enjoying these tournaments. I cannot wait to get to the conclusion, and I'm going to be here every step of the way, enjoying it as you are. So until next time, come get slammed.